Hello, everybody. Brian and Leslie Father here with the Unbreakable Podcast. We are excited to be with you today. Today is a special bonus episode of the Unbreakable Podcast because every once in a while we get a fifth week in a month and yep. August keeps on giving, <laughs> you know, with the heat and everything else. But it gave us a fifth week. So we're here today uh, to share some things with you um, and encourage you. It has nothing to do with the topic of the month or the topic for next month. By the way, this is your last chance today to let us know any topics you want us to talk about in September while we celebrate our annual first annual anniversary yes. mm-hmm. of the Unbreakable Podcast. We're really kind of excited about that. Yep. And most podcasts do not last a year. Uh, and we have. Woohoo! Yay. Go team go. <laughs> um anyway, we we just we're praying about what to give to you today and share with you. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. If not, your choice. Um Right? Your yeah. choice? Your yes, choice. It is your, so your choice. <laughs> the topic we chose for the extra content today is something that we really learned early in our faith walk. Mm-hmm. Had some teachers that taught us some things and showed us some things. Um, because I'm, I'm going to put a foundational scripture here for you. There's a scripture, I can't remember the exact context of it, uh, in the verse at the, in the top of my head right now because it's not in my notes. Um, but it, it's the scripture says, come out from among them mm-hmm. and be separate. Yep. My paraphrase version. Um, and so it's a New Testament scripture, so don't tell me I'm in the Old Testament. It's a New <laughs> Testament scripture that says, come out from among them and be separate. And the King James is, be ye separate, mm-hmm. or just be separate. Yeah. What's that mean? We shouldn't look the same as the world. That's what that means. We should look differently. Right. We should treat certain things differently. Mm-hmm. We should act yeah. in different ways in certain things. Mm-hmm. There are some things that the world does that are just fine. I know that's probably heretical to some of you but, <laughs> but there are some things you do it's just fine yeah you know that really have no bearing as far as your your faith mm-hmm. and your eternal life right I, i'll give you an example it's getting to be fall i'm a football guy football season so homecoming parades great things has nothing to do with eternity has no. nothing to do with your faith but nothing wrong with it no i'm just picking one thing randomly out of yeah. the blue so there are things that the world does that are perfectly fine mm-hmm. now those people getting drunk at the homecoming parade, another story. But, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but the parade itself is fine. Right. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Right. So we're, we're going to talk to you today about holidays and holy days, or holy days and holidays. Uh, depending on how you want to spell it, the same thing. Um, we actually, uh, Leslie's dad was our pastor for a number of years, and he actually wrote this little booklet. It was called yeah. Holy Days and Holidays. Mm-hmm. And I wish that he had written it in a time that he could have disseminated that better around uh, like Facebook and all that that's out there now because it's an interesting read and it's something that I've used. I don't read everything he says in there, but most of what I do. And, and so there's a lot of things in there that are really, really good. Um, so if you want a copy of that, let us know. We'll, we'll ask him and see if he'll want to let us do that or not. Um, anyway, we're going to talk today about holidays and holy days. And, and um, there's a background on holidays there's um if you look historically at holidays um do you want to go there you want to do no you're fine you're doing great okay <laughs> um a lot of holidays that we celebrate historically weren't christian holidays right they were other religious mm-hmm. entities holidays mostly pagan mm-hmm. um but other faiths uh, yeah. and, and and so what happened was when constantine was taking over the world as he did Mm -hmm. and he was a christian he believed in christ he decided to take all of the holidays that were already in place rename them and make them quote unquote christian he wanted to add christianity to what the people were celebrating he knew if he took away their festivals and their holidays they would come to kill him right because people are more wrapped up in those things Mm -hmm. than they are in changing in Mm -hmm. a lot of cases um, if you don't believe so, just watch Facebook um, <laughs> and other social platforms. But anyway, he did that. And so a lot of the holidays that we participate in, not all, but a lot of them have their roots in paganism and have their roots in things that are anti-Christian. Because those Christian celebrations share the same day as right. those other celebrations. Right. So anyway, there's a background that. So we want to kind of dissect that a little bit. Uh, probably not. We're not trying to be theologically deep here, but we are trying to get you to think about some stuff. Um, there are other ones that are not in regards to that. So 
uh, those would be like the patriotic holidays. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to start off with those first today. Yeah. Uh, and so they're not really something that started from a pagan background. No. They're, they they are different than that. Uh, we'll get to the others in a little bit. but He baited you. Yeah, really, he I did. did. <laughs> um, but we will start off with patriotic holidays. Um, so when, you, when you're going through the year, and I also want to say that God is a God of times and seasons. Yeah. He's a, he has festivals also, which is a whole nother topic we could get to, but he has festivals in his word that the Jewish people still celebrate today. Uh -huh. And, um, and those are, are laid out so that the people know what the time and the season is. It's, right. it's kind of the way God does things. He has a place for remembering things. He has a place for celebrating things. He has a place for repenting of things. You know, God just kind of does that in a cycle over and over and over because he knows as humans we need to do that over and over and over right. <laughs> and so in america where we are um we have patriotic holidays and i think most nations do have holidays that are for their national um, um remembrance and their national yeah. um you know what goes on in their nation they, they most nations have that in our nation memorial day and Flag Day, and the Fourth of July, and Veterans Day, Labor Day, and Labor Day. Those are those are patriotic holidays that are laid out from about spring to fall. They kind of go across the that part of our calendar, but those are days where we remember the people who have fought in wars for us. We remember what it took for our nation to become independent and become its own nation. We remember. Um, uh, the, to honor the flag that represents our nation yeah. um, and the people then who are are working in our nation we we celebrate and remember all these things with special days and when our children were young we homeschooled you've heard about that <laughs> last month and if you didn't go back and listen right um, but we when we homeschooled then we took opportunity even though several of those kind of fell in the summertime where we were out of school we are a live uh, we live a learning lifestyle right and so when the holiday came around it's not just a day to eat good food and have a firecracker um well, that's know, part of it although that's part of it but we also would try to make sure that they remembered what the holiday specifically was for what was it honoring what was it celebrating we would review and go over right. history things and um and then um, on occasion, like on a Veterans Day or um, uh, let's just stick with Veterans Day. On Veterans Day, you know, a lot of times we would write a letter to a veteran and thank them for their service. They honored their living relatives who had served um, one year and we, we made special little gifts for them and, and we honored them and, and always thank them for what they did for our nation. And so we, we tried to instill in our children uh, a love for country and a, um, a heart that was grateful uh -huh. for what had been done before they got here so that they could enjoy the freedoms that they have. We believe that's tied yeah. to our faith in God yes. because our nation was founded by people who were coming away from persecution and to a place where they wanted to be able to worship the Lord, the Lord, the Lord God, Jehovah, the Lord. They, they wanted to worship him and feel free to do that without right. being uh, persecuted. And so our nation was founded in Judeo-Christian beliefs and, and, um, and, and that's, that was what we want to instill in our children. We want them to know the history of our nation. Some really great places to find things out about our nation are, um, there's a couple of places on the, on the web and so... Uh, David Barton, anything David Barton does, he has an incredible collection of documents and artifacts and things that he can tell you of our nation's faith in the beginning right. and throughout the years, what was done in faith and, and um, in belief in God. It's a, a really um, fun yeah. place to go and look at things. It's called Wall Builders. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And, and so and he has actually has the second largest collection of documents from our founding right and the only place that has more is in dc yeah in the national you know, and in the archives mm -hmm. he has the second most and he got a lot of them directly from descendants 
of our founding fathers mm -hmm. and the people that were around during the revolution. Right. So, you know, yeah. kind of good guys to check out. What else did you have to, to check out besides him? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. If it comes back around, we'll just <laughs> we'll bring that out. That'll be fine. <laughs> anyway, but uh, there are lots of really good places. Look for places that are, um, that are purposefully giving the documentation of what right. they're telling you right and um, because there are is a move to rewrite our history yep. in our nation right now and when you get to the rewriting places it doesn't say the same thing as what the original stuff does so always look for the original um, but we felt it was important to in our family and and we grew up with a sense of loyalty uh -huh. and patriotism and respect and honor for our nation we yep. wanted our children to also have that yep. and so they do they do they are very grateful um and very um, respecting of our nation and our flag and, and anything that has to do with our nation so. yeah so we think it's a big deal to be patriotic mm -hmm. um and to give honor and respect and loyalty that that doesn't mean that we agree with everything that our government's ever done no it doesn't mean that we like Everything that happens inside, pardon the expression, but the four walls of our country. Mm -hmm. um, so, I can I can still be honorable, respectful, loyal, and, and um, honoring my country without following with just complete blind faith. Right. So when they do something wrong, I want to call it out. When they do something right, I want to call that out. But I'm not going to go walk around protesting everything. Um, just because I can. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to show our children how to be honorable and respectful and loyal to our nation because um, that goes a long ways. Uh, loyalty is a big, big deal because in this culture, in in this society that we're in right now, loyalty's kind of been tossed to a side. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm only loyal to me, I'm not loyal to anything but me. Yeah. And that's just not a patriotic way to do it, nor is it a biblical Christian way you do that so i think involved in all of that too we also taught our children to pray for our nation yes to pray for our leaders um we, even if we didn't like them yeah even if they weren't maybe who we wanted to be in office um they we still learn to pray for our leaders and pray for our nation that there would be um god's guidance and help on our nation and so each of those patriotic holidays is a day to stop and to pray and to remember yeah and, and to thank god and that brings us to the next one, which is kind of a mix of um, patriotic and, and a Christian holiday, yes, it is. which is Thanksgiving um, coming up in the fall here. Um, Thanksgiving for us is a day that um, has been designated. Football, food, faith. It's been designated <laughs> by our government as a day to give thanks to God, but um, is definitely a Christian based it holiday is. because we are bringing thanks to the Lord God Almighty. Uh, for all that he has done in our nation, all that he's done in yeah. our lives. Um, Thanksgiving is a big deal at our house. When the um, children were young, um, we'd have plays that they uh -huh. acted out. We'd have songs that they'd practiced and sang for us. And um, it was really a a big to-do when Thanksgiving came along. That one year they dressed up like pilgrims and Indians and or Native Americans. And they... Um, but they they wore the the outfits and then they acted out different things. Yep. They they have done all kinds of scripture memorization for Thanksgiving. Um, we have a great big huge too much to eat dinner, which is awesome and wonderful, and the leftovers are the best. And mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, it is a wonderful day that we celebrate as a large family together, not just our immediate family, but we get together with our extended families. Right. We are thankful and grateful for all that the Lord has done for us. And so Thanksgiving is an awesome holiday for us. We're probably one of our biggest because yeah. we are able to be thankful in the patriotic sense, but also thankful on our, in our, for our Christian roots and right. for all the things that the Lord has done and where he's leading us. Um, so we make a big celebration of that. We do. And one of our favorite traditions in that is before we, you know, dive in and eat and forget people exist around us. Um, <laughs> when we do that, you know, you know how it gets quiet because everybody's eating. Yes. And you're like, it's good. But we, before we do that, we go around the room 
and give everyone an opportunity to talk about whatever they felt thankful for right. over the last year mm -hmm. and what what they would like to give God thanks for, uh, be it family, be it prosperity, be it mm -hmm. their health, excuse me, whatever it may be. They we give them that opportunity to right. share from their heart with each other, and it's fun because especially when the kids were uh, younger, mm -hmm. I mean, they're still good. They're, they're older, but when they're younger, they came up with, with some interesting right. things to be thankful yeah. for. You know, um, and I don't remember one off the top of my head, but they were but they were fun, and um, and we never made fun of any of that. We 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 took it and respected it and I think, honored it. I think one of the ones like the. the our children used to help Matthew yes. with his Thanksgiving because Matthew is overcoming autism, doesn't always have creative thoughts or, right. or thoughts where he, he understands exactly what we're talking about. And so they would help him say the things that he was yeah. thankful for. Yeah. And so um, we always make, not always, but a lot of times we had like a big um, tree on a poster board or, and then we, we would take leaves and write our Thanksgiving on the leaves and add them to the tree. And so they'd be fall looking tree, but full of Thanksgiving. Sometimes we did turkey and other things. We just were creative that way. But, um, they always thought that he was thankful for pancakes, which he probably is. He still loves pancakes. So yeah. that was one of his, their favorite. So Thanksgiving is a big deal it at, is. at our house. It is. And yes. we hope there's a big deal at your house because mm -hmm. you can never go wrong being thankful. Right. I don't care if it's being thankful for your spouse, for your family, yeah. for your work, for your business, being thankful for being in this country. Right. Uh, thankfulness goes a long way. God in Scripture talks a lot about gratefulness right. and thankfulness. Yeah. And so it's an opportunity to give God thanks and give people around you thanks as well. Sure. It's, it's a big deal. Absolutely. But anything else for Thanksgiving? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, so that brings us to um, the Christian celebrations. Um, Brian had baited you and talked to you earlier about um, Constantine and how he set right. up holidays trying to get people to convert. I'm, I'm sure he was trying to get people to convert over to Christianity yeah. um, in all the pagan nations that he was ruling over. Um, however, he kind of missed out on the point that um, Christianity is a is a thing of your it's your heart. It has to do with your heart, and your heart has to change. Yeah. You can't just command people to change. You have to they have to hear the gospel, be pricked in their hearts over the gospel, and their hearts have to change and receive the Lord, and then they will honor the Lord in those other yeah. um, celebrations and things. And I think he just missed that point, but he set in motion what. Um, the the Christian church did in that era, in that time yeah. frame. And so he, um, the the Catholic church was the only Christian church at that point. And they um, celebrated the birth of Christ, the death and resurrection of Christ. Uh -huh. they, they celebrated those things. Um, and even a few other holidays that are really God-honoring holidays, they just, they put them on top of pagan holidays that were already going on so our philosophy our what we believe um, kind of comes from first corinthians 10 31 that says whatever you may do do all for the honor and glory of god so if you can um honor the lord in something i believe you can redeem it and make it to where the lord sees your heart and knows that you are honoring him and that you are lifting up praise and thanksgiving to him you are blessing him by doing what you're doing, I think then that is a good thing. Yeah. Um, we believe that way. So um, whether you're someone who believes in celebrating the holidays or not celebrating the holidays, and there are both sides out there, um, what our main focus is, is Jesus. Right. Everything we do, everything we celebrate, the focus is Jesus. Right. If Jesus can't be focused on in that holiday somehow, then that's not one that we do. <laughs> that's kind of our basis of how we believe. Um, so when it comes to Christmas time, we actually start it at, with Advent. And we, for us, <laughs> Christmas is progressive. <laughs> right. Um, it's a progression of um, 
thinking about how the Lord came right. and and what had to take place for him to come. And so we go through the um, the candles for Advent. We, we focus on different aspects of the Lord, um, love and joy and hope and peace. And we also, uh, especially when our children were young, yep. we would have a crush that we put out, a, yep. a manger scene, a, a stable scene. But ours was always progressive because our children learned about the story by progressing the people into the scene. <laughs> so it would start um, early in December and Mary and Joseph would start on their trek to Bethlehem. And then the shepherds would be out in the field and the wise men would be on another side because nobody was together until they got all until the way to, together. Yeah, till till the birth of Jesus. And we are also ones who are very literal about the fact that the wise men came to see Jesus, not in the stable in Bethlehem, but later when he was a young child. Yeah. And so those wise men had to keep walking after Christmas. <laughs> they, had, they had a couple of weeks, you know, and then they finally would arrive. And, and it, it was just a way for us to work the story, the account of Jesus' birth yeah. for our children in a way that they would understand that this came first then this happened, you know, we would go through the dreams that Joseph had and, yeah. the, and the visitations of the angels. And then those shepherds would meet, you know, they would see the angels and they would come running. So we kind of worked the story slowly through the month so that the children understood yeah. the process of the story. And it gave them a visual contact point right. to look at. And, and so by the time they were 10, 12 years old, they could probably tell people who didn't know the, all, right. all the all of the story, right. the story better than some theologians and pastors, um, just because we took the time yes. to walk through that. So it's a it's a great example of a, of uh, a redeemed holiday. Right. Um, we do not participate in Santa Claus and the elves. We don't do that because right. Saint Nicholas, although he was a real man, is a he died. He's a human. He died. He's gone. And so we do not celebrate with santa claus and elves we don't do that um we believe that good gifts come from the lord and so yeah we yeah, give gifts absolutely do because god gives us gifts we give gifts to others and i'm going to jump on that for a minute because another holiday that that, that i believe is redeemable is easter or we like to call it resurrection sunday um yeah so it's a redeemable holiday but both of those both easter and christmas have Iconic characters and iconic stories right. that are attached to them that are fabricated. Yeah, they're not true. Yeah. Um, and so, if I teach my children these fabricated stories, and they hit an age where they all of a sudden realize mm -hmm. those stories are not real, right? They are fabricated. At the same time, I'm teaching them all the accounts and stories about Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. and God. So there's a correlation that clicks in their head. If they get to a certain point and said, Mom and Dad lied about this. Mm -hmm. What makes this other true? They lied to me about this. Mm -hmm. You may be going, you're such a whatever. Um, <laughs> and you might be like mad at me for saying that, but I, I don't care because my children did not walk away from their faith in their teens and in early 20s because they knew we told them the truth about everything. They would come to us, ask us about Santa Claus. They would ask us about the Easter Bunny. And we would tell the truth. And this is what this is. This is why people celebrate it. This is what the story is. But we don't celebrate that. And here's why. And we would do it that way. Yeah. And we just, and whatever age, it was age appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, but you're trying to kill their fun. I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not here to raise children to have fun. I'm here to raise children to be responsible, Christian, Bible-believing adults. And I'm more concerned about their eternity than I am their entertainment. Although we always had fun, we always had we fun. always had fun in the Lord. There's fun. Yeah, the Lord is fun. He's not a killjoy. No, and so, so that's why we give gifts. We give. Yeah, and it comes from mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever. Um, you know, we we didn't even do the we could went all on board and just just gifts from Jesus. We didn't do that. We um, we, we gave, but we gave, yeah. and we we blessed. You know. We tell the, the Easter story, which is the resurrection story, and we, we shared the truth about that. Um, mm -hmm. And so, and we celebrate and rejoice that yeah, the Lord absolutely. rose. Yeah. We do Good Friday. We, and 
and we don't we don't do the Catholic version of Ash Wednesday and Good Friday and all that, but we do celebrate those moments. We celebrate celebrate that Jesus was yeah crucified, that yeah. he was dead, buried, and then that he rose again. He's resurrected, and, which is the um, power of the gospel. All of that, throughout all of those things, you know, we would take time to teach our children hymns because hymns yeah. have lots of theology in them. Yeah, we find do. the ones that are solid. But we would teach them hymns that help them understand the accounts of what happened with Jesus. We would, um, you know, we sing music. We would make. We would have art. We'd have crafts. Yeah. We we do all the things to help celebrate, but centered in Jesus. Yeah. And um, the only things that we that we took out of Christmas celebration or resurrection celebration were the things that were not of God. Right. Um, things that had. Um, mystical stuff to them or things that had um a, a pagan story attached yes. to it because the um the easter eggs and all that that's attached to the yeah. goddess ishtar and and just so there's lots of things that we didn't want to do because we just didn't want that connection to the things that weren't holy right so we just put our focus on what was god god yeah. jesus is holy and so we would put our focus on that now um, we've had lots and lots of years where we did not have a Christmas tree. People go back and forth about it's an idol. It's not an idol. It's an idol. It's not an idol. I don't know. As long as I'm not worshiping it, I don't think it's an idol. So we've had years where we have had a Christmas tree. We've had small ones. We've had big. We No, we maybe haven't had a big one. But we've had small ones. <laughs> I don't know. We, we haven't always had ones. a lot of room in our home. Right, we've had a couple so of big small ones. ones. But, um, but the the main point is that as long as what you do in your celebration doesn't right. honor an idol of some kind, which would make it be something Pagan that's bigger that than God yeah. to you, then then you're good. Um, so you know those are, there are some things that we do and things we don't do. Yeah. And what another thing that Brian started this with was that people know us by how we behave, yeah. by what we do. They, they see how we are interacting with a holiday, how we're interacting with a celebration. Yeah. And they see there's a difference when we are specifically trying to honor the Lord. Yeah. And when we're just doing whatever comes is great. You know, and uh, there's, there's a difference. And, and let me give you a little bit of a balance here. We're not judging others who don't do it the way we do it. Mm -mm. Um, if, they, if they do whatever in whatever holiday, we mm -hmm. don't judge them. We just don't always participate in everything that they do. Right. Um, and and that shines out or shows out, however you want to look at that. And so we've had people ask, well, why don't you do ABC? Mm -hmm. well, why is it you do do ABC? Right. And, and so we'll share that with them mm -hmm. because that's an opportunity to share what we see and what we believe right. you know, from a gospel's perspective. And right. then they can do that what they want. That's, that's not on us. That's exactly. on them. Exactly. Um, you know, and we're, we're in the... One of the reasons we're doing this today is our pastor has been preaching on a series on um, stand and standing. And he talked about you don't have to stand for what you don't believe in. You stand for what you do believe in. Right. So we, we've always taken a stand from a positive perspective, mm -hmm. not from a negative perspective. Mm -hmm. um, there, so we have always tried to do things from that angle mm -hmm. and not the other. Mm -hmm. There is one holiday that we believe is not redeemable. Just let that lay there, man. <laughs> One holiday, we don't participate in, in any way, shape, or form. No. We just don't do it. Churches do. Christians do. A lot of people do. A lot of people take, and they do what Constantine did, and they try to convert it to make it Christianese, and we just don't believe it has any redeeming value to it whatsoever. What one is it? Arbor Day? No. <laughs> Flag Day? No. <laughs> My birthday. No. <laughs> um, it's Halloween. Yeah. We, that's, that's one particular holiday that we just don't participate in. Anyway, now we grew up, we both participated as children in that, but when we became adults. In ignorance. We didn't know no, we had no what idea. we were doing. And so, but as adults, the, the Bible says when I became a, a man, I put away childish things and I started acting like a man. I started acting and become an adult. And so we look at that from a from a critical not criticism, but critical, um, not even judgmental, just from a perspective like, is there any way we could take this and turn it for good? You know, the Bible says that God can turn anything for good, right? 
But there are certain things that, that we believe cannot be turned for good. Not people, things. Mm -hmm. This is one of them. Because the basis of, the premise of, and the practice of has always been based in satanic, paganistic witchcraft. Right. How do you redeem that? How do you make Satanism and Wiccanism and, and magic and all, all that good? I think the, the main don't. thing that we don't like is that, that Halloween is actually a high Satanic holiday. Yep. And even in our modern world, there are um, human sacrifices done. There are yep. children who are abused. There are, there are bad, bad, bad things in the underworld yeah. <laughs> that are happening on that holiday. Um, and, and nothing about it points to Jesus. Well, nothing about it points to Jesus. Right. There's nothing involved in that holiday that points to Jesus. And so we do not participate in Halloween. That did not rob our children of anything. <laughs> it saved them from something, actually. So we never, ever have participated right. in that. Um, that is not one that we feel is a good one. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't some day in the fall that we don't enjoy a good bonfire or, you know, right. have a fun hayride or something like that. But we just don't put all that stuff on that day. Yeah, we're cool with the fall festival. We're cool with all that kind of thing. But we don't do it on that particular day yeah. because we don't want to make that a gray area. We right. want it black and white. Right. We want it, people to know that this is something we don't do. We'll do yes. the other. We'll do a hayride. We'll do yeah. a bonfire. We'll roast marshmallows. We'll cook hot dogs. Mm -hmm. We'll do all of the things that go along with that. We're That's not going to go house to house and get candy from people. No. But we're going to do everything but that. And, and we're going to mm -hmm. rejoice in the season. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to rejoice on that day. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's it? Yep. So we saved our negative one for the last. <laughs> Hope that you didn't ruin everything else for you. Um I think the point, though, is just to find Jesus and to celebrate yeah. the things that honor him. Um, even even going into, you know, if you want to go into the, the Hebrew, Hebrew, the Jewish holidays and yeah. find something that you can celebrate that, that praises and worships the Lord. Yeah. Lifts him up. Go for it. All right. Shameless plug on the bonus content. Go get my wife's book. The UnbreakableFamily.com. And you can get the family manual, yes. how to, a practical guide to raising a Christian family. I about <laughs> lost it there for a second. So you can go get her book, the family manual. You can do it on Amazon, other places, yeah. you know, wherever they sell books, Barnes & Noble, Walmart. You can get it. But we would love for you to get it from our website, the yeah. UnbreakableFamily.com, because that would actually help us um, resource-wise, to do the things that we do. Yeah. So uh, go get, do that. That's our shameless plug. With that said, we're praying for you on a weekly basis. We're hoping that your marriage and your family stay strong and unbreakable. We're believing for God to do great things for you throughout the rest of this year and for the rest of your life. So uh, please, 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 uh, enjoy yourselves and, and know that we love you and that we're praying for you. And go get the book yeah. in Jesus' name. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.